Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News, joining you live from my mobile setup here in Southern California. It's Hotel Dave. All right, so in this video, our second of the day, and by the way, pardon my lighting. The lighting's no good. I don't have, you know what I mean? I look, you know, I tell you what, when you get to a certain age, you need good lighting. We don't have it today, but hey, I digress. You guys don't care. The audio is perfect. Okay, so fans share their love. Bachelor's Brooklyn is overwhelmed by love and support after this past episode we're going to talk about this and dance around certain trigger words and this is a trigger warning uh, because why make a video if youtube's just going to shadow ban it because there's just certain words that are you know a little taboo to discuss um, on this platform and I hate that that's the case because I think it's a conversation very much worth having of course the I, the conversation around DV and um, uh, how brave Brooklyn is to discuss that on this past episode and uh, we're going to read the article right now and talk a little bit about it Grateful for her growth. Bachelor's Brooklyn is speaking out after sharing with Zach and the world that she is a survivor. I am overwhelmed with the outpouring of love and support. We just read that. Along with her message of thanks, Brooklyn reposted a fan's video of footage from her date with Zach. The twosome went on a one-on-one -on -one date during the Monday, February 13th episode of the ABC series as the tech exec and his remaining women traveled to the Bahamas. And as we've talked about in the past, it's a sad statistic, but it is an accurate one, overwhelmingly, that the um, violence that most people face in their life is not from a stranger, but from their loved one. And... Um, uh, so many people stay in toxic situations because of a um, very a variety of reasons, from financial manipulation to um, to to loving them. You can love someone, and um, it doesn't mean that uh, you know. In, in certain situations, it might be hard to break the spell that keeps you in a toxic situation. So, uh, not only is it brave to leave one, but it's also brave to talk about it on national TV because you are not identified by what someone else ever did to you. Uh, and yet we hold on to that burden as if we did something wrong, we being the victim. And of course, luckily, I think we live in a time that's finally realizing the shame that exists and we're deburdening. So good on Brooklyn for sharing her story and all the people that it probably affects. Along with her message of thanks, Brooklyn reposted the fans' video. We got that after a fun-filled day of um, ATV riding on the beach, the pair sat down for dinner. Brooklyn began by stating that she admires her grandparents' relationship and told Zach that she was in a long-term relationship that became emotionally and physically abusive. I honestly never got into details with anyone because it sometimes reopens wounds. For six whole years, I was not myself, and I woke up one day and I was like, no, this can't define me, the Oklahoma native said. I truly believe that I wouldn't have just woke up and got out. I can literally guarantee I would not be sitting here right now. Brooklyn was overcome with emotion while sharing her experience. During a confessional interview, she recalled that the relationship got to such a harmful point that she woke up one night to find cops nearby after she was knocked out by her now ex. When Brooklyn began ex sharing her story, I have to tell you, the there's there's just something, um, and it's sadly so, uh, that it takes a show like The Bachelor where we get to know people and see the goodness, and she rides horses, and she's she just seems to be a kind person, right? And by sharing the sort of visuals and descriptions of her story, not just that she is a victim, but you know, uh, painting a little bit of that description there is heartbreaking, and. We shouldn't need that to empathize with somebody, but if there was any doubt, that is now gone. People are rooting for Brooklyn. She told the cameras that she that he was uh, uh, Zach told the cameras that he was blown away by Brooklyn's strength after she admitted that she never had a reciprocated love. The Bachelorette alum told his date, "You've gone through battles that I didn't imagine, but you are so effing tough, and it makes me sick to my stomach that you had to go through something like this." I don't know what could prepare Zach for these types of conversations as just like a regular bloke who probably you know. Unfortunately, when we've talked about things like, well, I don't want I don't want to get into too many other tough situations. Situations, but when we've had heavy conversations, uh, so many people internalize their thoughts because they think something's wrong with them because something else happened in their life. And we just have to remember we're all united in the sense that we're all just spinning around this rock. We uh, genetically are more similar than we are diverse. Even the most diverse humans that exist out there, we are so closely uh, linked that. I personally believe if somebody's in a situation, it's more an environment, it's more a result of their environment in, in, in that sometimes people are uh, born into ignorant towns or living in a, in a tight time of the world that's not as progressive as others or these. And I'm always more 
wanting to blame the environment for being the cause of that toxicity than the actual person having any bad intentions. Now, Brooklyn here, she's this is a straight up story of a victim. But for her to share that and to say, I'm not I'm not a you know, I'm not a weak person. I, I you know, it's it's really just kudos to her because she didn't have to do that. You know, she didn't have to do that. She could have kept that to herself and she could have just have already, you know, gone through all of the emotional um, sort of um, journey that she would be on. But this is this is for her to share and for her audience to root her on and to, to realize you're not alone. That's what it comes down to. Sorry. To, sorry. It took so long to get there. It's a tough subject, right? Following Brooklyn's emotional reveal, host Jesse Palmer took to social media to share support. Heartbreaking to hear Brooklyn talk about her past relationship. She is so strong, courageous, and deserving of love and happiness. This isn't the first time contestants on this series have shed light on their difficult past. During a June 2021 episode of The Bachelorette, Katie talked about her past experience with SA. And, um, we're, and then she had her quote there, I'd been drinking, I was involved in a situation where there wasn't consent. And, uh, and then, of course, as the show uh, has learned about, I would say, more you know, new age ways to discuss this, they've learned to start using title cards, which are the cards in the beginning of a scene that say, hey, there's going to be a heavy conversation which, you know, gives people the chance to bow out if they're not wanting to hear it. Um, if you or someone you know are experiencing domestic violence, please call the, the National DV hotline 1-800-799-7233 for confidential support. So we are rooting her on very much and look forward to seeing where Brooklyn's journey takes her. I thought it was, I thought her, her one-on-one date was really, it's just a real great experience. They did the kiss, then she hit him with the knuckles, and he goes, "Oh, knucks!" And she's like, "No, it's because we're friends now, or whatever." She, you know, I think we've all been Brooklyn in that situation where we've done something and don't know what to. I mean, she's making out with a guy, and then she's like, "I don't know what to do next," and she gives him a, you know, pound like he's a cousin of hers. How funny, you know, they're from. All right, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but how funny of for her right there. All right, I had one more story from Us Weekly, but I don't know if I can find it here. One second, do we have it? It might be gone. It might be gone. The story we had was, um, oh, I was going to talk about per the perfect match. Um, are you guys watching the perfect match? I know it's a weird segue to get into here, but I have committed to recapping the show. But I think that rather than recapping the show, I'm just going to sort of discuss it um, on the podcast uh, as more of just like additional conversation regarding the show. So... And again, I know this is a hard left turn. Perfect Match is essentially Netflix version of Bachelor in Paradise, which is where you send, it's, it's kind of like Land of the Misfit Toys. It's where you send everybody when they've already done their dating shows and they're still single. That's kind of what it is. It's like, all right, still single. It's like when you go to a store and there's all those like, um, you know, well, it's a tough analogy to make. It's the clearance aisle, folks. Netflix star Francesca Farrago hasn't watched Perfect Match yet. And yes, she's aware she might be the villain. So we see our friend Elizabeth Wagmeister here is covering Perfect Match match as she seems to be the sort of uh, do-all um, dating journalist there at Variety. She broke out. So we saw Francesca on Too Hot to Handle, right? She broke out into reality superstardom during the pandemic when Netflix launched the first season of Too Hot to Handle in 2020. Can you believe that? 2020, this was like three years ago, the pandemic. It never ends. And arguably, the biggest star to come from that show, uh, Francesca, blew up on social media after becoming known for owning her sexuality, her shameless personality, and one-liners that would not fly on broadcast television. Love her or hate her, she is reality TV gold. All right, so she's back on Perfect Match, and so is uh, Nick Uhlenhut. Am I pronouncing that right? And, you know, on the first couple episodes, they have, like, kissing contest, which, by the way, Nick scored, like, a really, I think the highest score. He got, like, nines out of tens. They did blindfold kissing contest, and there's no blurring of the butt cracks and all of the FCC rules that we see on uh, network TV. And because of that, they're able to take some more liberties. It's a far sexier show, to put it lightly. But... Perfect Match has very similar gamesmanship that Bachelor in Paradise does. Now, Bachelor in Paradise does this, the rose at the end of the thing. Do you accept this rose? And they match up. What I love about how like trashy Netflix can be uh, is that rather than have some sort of formality, they just say, do you want to go up to my villa with me? So by bringing someone up to your villa, that's considered a match. And then I, and then you have to sleep together. I don't think you don't have to get intimate, but you have to like sleep in the same villa together. Um, and then matches, I think on Bachelor in Paradise, people stick with their matches longer. But so far from the first few episodes, it seems like there's a lot of flipping with the matches happening on the Netflix version of Perfect Match. Now, will there be a perfect match with the ratings and how it all goes down i don't know but i feel like netflix 
is less worried about ratings. They don't have that same sort of like obsession with ratings. They're like, oh, let's make a good TV show. And I think what Netflix realizes is since there's unlimited bandwidth with um, with the internet, Netflix doesn't have a time slot that this has to exist. It will make money because the show has cheap rent. It's cheap talent and easy to produce as opposed to say like, you know, Last of Us, the zombie mushroom show. That's a little bit more expensive when you got to rent out an arena and paint everybody in portobello mushrooms coming out of their neck or whatever they got there. So <laughs> with a show like this, it's it's not going to, these dating shows all pop up because they're easy to make and Nick Lachey is going to be printing checks in the process. Um, let me know if you guys are watching, leave a comment and of course share some love with Brooklyn. Um, and it's good to see that bachelor nation is rallying around Brooklyn here in this situation and making her feel loved. And that's what she deserves. So let me know what you guys think. One more video coming right after this. So make sure you're subscribed and we'll get to that shortly. Bye.